Why would someone own so many cars? Why does your favorite automotive YouTuber have so many cars? Why do I own so many cars? I always get a question from some people in the comments as to why I have the cars I have or how did I get them? How did I afford them? This isn't going to be a financial video. Maybe in the future we run through some financial stuff. Right now I just don't have the statistics and facts and figures that I would like to present if I ever made a video like that. But I have about six vehicles right now and I talk about buying more cars or buying more expensive cars or just a whole like lot of things when it comes to more and more vehicles and I thought I would answer the question as to why not only me but some of your guys' favorite youtubers have so many cars now obviously it boils down to someone who's making YouTube videos and is getting a whole lot of money is going to buy more cars because it makes more videos more cars result in more video opportunities. If car breaks, that's a new video. Also, people like to bring in new audiences with different cars. A BMW and a Miata are going to have different audiences from each other, for the most part. Some audiences overlap, but some people watch only videos on BMWs, while some people only watch videos on JDM cars. Audiences are very, very different, so that's another reason why YouTubers have so many cars. But I've told you guys this in the past. I'm not really considering myself a YouTuber because if I used YouTube as a business model to afford the cars that I currently have, I would be very much in debt. Now I talk about buying a couple of new vehicles and there's a reason for that. I am liquidating out of a couple of cars, which gives me the opportunity to either fix my cars or modify them more or buy new vehicles. But another thing that you gotta think of is, well, the car market goes up and down a lot. There's some cars that you have the opportunity to make a couple bucks on, like my barn find Miata. I'm gonna end up selling that car. I got YouTube content out of it and I'm going to come out pretty good on it. Now, when you're seeing your favorite YouTubers who may or may not have thousands or hundreds of thousands of subscribers, if they do have hundreds of thousands of subs, and they're pulling hundreds of thousands of views or more, millions of views potentially, most likely they're going to have a collection of five to 10 or maybe even 10 to 20 different cars. And that's because you can only work on a car so much before the content starts to get a little stale. There's only a certain level that you can hit before your audience gets bored of your cars. I feel like I hit that threshold with the Mustang a while ago, which is why you guys have basically seen no videos with it. I kind of hit that with the Lexus, the BMW. I mean, I could make a couple videos on because I have no mods done to the car, but other than modifying the car, really hit a wall on this. The Miata, we're just getting started. There's still endless possibilities to doing this car, but if I'm not doing anything with the car, it's going to get boring for you guys. Now, I've said this in the past. I don't buy my vehicles for YouTube. I don't go into buying a vehicle thinking, is this going to get me views or is this car good for YouTube or can I make YouTube videos on this car? So far with every vehicle I have bought, the metric for me buying it has been, do I want this car? Yes, okay, cool, I'm gonna buy it. As I said, I'm not making tens of thousands of dollars a month on YouTube or even thousands of dollars a month on YouTube. If YouTube was a metric for me, we're not gonna get into exact numbers, but if you guys are interested, I probably would share them. I would be bankrupt if if I did what I'm doing based off of my YouTube. But recently you guys have seen me talk a little bit about potentially buying a new car. And that's kind of a little bit something I want to get into because your favorite YouTubers, the bigger YouTubers, the bigger automotive YouTubers, you know, if they have 10 cars, that's 10 cars they have content with. I have six right now and that will probably be down to anywhere between three or four by the end of the year. You might be a little confused on what I'm talking about. So let me get into this and talk a little bit about it. A car like the BMW, it's worth a good amount of money, but I don't see this car ever losing its value. So let's say I bought the BMW. Let's say I bought it for $10,000. Obviously these cars cost a little bit more, but just, just to keep it simple, let's say I bought it for $10,000. Now let's say I make 10 videos on the BMW. Now those videos might blow up, and those videos might get a couple hundred to a couple thousand views like I normally get. So I made 10 videos on this car. I'm not going to make $10,000 back from it. But owning a BMW, 
and having a new car for 10 videos can promote new people coming to the channel because a new car. New car videos tend to do good because it's a fresh topic that engages people so they're most likely to watch it and it will increase views and increase subscribers. New audience brings in more people who watch which eventually brings more views which eventually brings more money. But automotive YouTube is probably one of the more expensive sides of YouTube because in order to keep a audience engaged you have to either be modifying or buying new cars to a certain extent. I'm 10 videos in. I'm going to give a rough estimate. Let's say we make $500. You spent $10,000, you made $500 out of those $10,000 and you got a couple views and some more subscribers and new people intrigued in your page. You lost $9,500. Maybe even more if you put more money into the car or modify the cars. So now you have a $9,500 liability which is probably a $10,000 liability because you probably put $500 into making videos with gas or something like that. So now you spent $10,000 and you're still left with $10,000 because you're not a big YouTuber. But if you bought the car for $10,000 and if you bought correctly, maybe you can pull $12,000 out of the car. So if I bought the BMW, made some videos on it, grew the channel a little bit more with a new car, and then I make 10 to 20 videos on the car, modify the car a little bit, and when I kind of feel like I'm reaching that peak, if I can't justify affording the car, I sell it. Then I make about one to $2,000, potentially pulling some of the money I got from the modifications. Then I made about one to $2,000 from the YouTube videos and maybe some sponsors hop on to help out with some of the mods I did. Now we're positive side of $2,000. And that goes even more so with your favorite YouTuber. I should probably stop saying your favorite YouTuber, just a bigger automotive YouTuber is what I'm trying to get at. Not only have they cleared the cost of the car, but they probably also grew in terms of subscribers and viewers because of their new car. So if you're ever wondering how that kind of goes down, that is a kind of easy to follow layout of all of it. Now, of course, I'm not trying to diminish anything because it's a lot of work. I, they work extremely hard in order to get hundreds of thousands of views and millions of subscribers. It doesn't just happen with new cars and continuously buying new cars. But when you see them buying new cars and you think to yourself, what? That's the reason why. And I've said in the past, I don't buy cars for YouTube. And that still tends to be true because I'm not making money. I'm nowhere close to being in the green for even the Miata, which is easily my cheapest car. People always are interested in like the inside of YouTube, so I thought I'd bring that up a little bit. There's a lot more that goes into it. That's kind of just like a very surface layer thing because there's a ton of more costs associated with YouTube and everything like that. In the future, I'd love to do more of a financial breakdown on everything, but I just don't have a lot of facts and figures to go over. Like even if I went to my YouTube, I only have maybe a year or two of real statistics to show you guys and it's so different year to year and even month to month for me sometimes that it honestly doesn't really reflect anything in any way. Going into the future however, if you guys are interested in that, I can probably put a video together maybe in another six months, eight months where I might try some new things and if people are interested, I mean let me know. I'm sure everyone's interested on how would you buy all the cars. If you guys have enjoyed, leave me a like, subscribe to the channel. If you guys are interested in seeing some more new cars or more cars, watch another video of mine. I'll see you guys in the next one.